Tangled threads, unraveling self-compassion and self-pity. Self-compassion and self-pity. Two sides of the same coin? Not quite. We often confuse these concepts, but understanding the difference is crucial for our well-being. Self-pity keeps us stuck in a cycle of negativity. We become our own worst critics, drowning in a sea of why me? Self-compassion, on the other hand, offers a lifeline. It's about treating ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we would offer a close friend. It's acknowledging our pain and imperfections without judgment, recognizing that we are not alone in our struggles. Imagine a friend confiding in you about a mistake. Would you berate them or would you offer comfort and support? Self-compassion is that same gentle hand extended to ourselves even when we stumble. It's a powerful force that allows us to rise above challenges, learn from our mistakes and cultivate a more loving relationship with ourselves. Stuck in the muck. The perils of self-pity. Self-pity is a seductive trap. It whispers that we are victims of circumstance, powerless to change our situation. It thrives on negativity, magnifying our flaws and misfortunes. We become consumed by our perceived shortcomings, replaying past hurts like a broken record. This negativity seeps into every aspect of our lives, poisoning our relationships, work and overall well-being. Imagine being stuck in a dark room, the walls closing in. That's what self-pity feels like. It keeps us stuck in a cycle of inaction and despair. We become so focused on our own suffering that we fail to see the good around us or the opportunities for growth and change. Self-pity is a dead end, preventing us from living a full and meaningful life. A warm embrace, the power of self-compassion. Self-compassion is a beacon of hope, a warm embrace on a cold day. It's about recognizing our common humanity, understanding that everyone makes mistakes, everyone experiences pain and suffering. It's about treating ourselves with kindness and understanding, especially when we fall short of our own expectations. Self-compassion empowers us to acknowledge our struggles without judgment, to see our imperfections as opportunities for growth. Imagine a garden where each mistake is like compost, enriching the soil and allowing us to bloom even brighter. Self-compassion allows us to cultivate resilience, to bounce back from adversity with greater strength and wisdom. It's a journey of self-discovery, of learning to love and accept ourselves, flaws and all. Recognizing the different self-compassion or self-pity. How can we tell if we're caught in the grip of self-pity or Embracing the warmth of self-compassion, here's a simple litmus test. Ask yourself, is this thought or feeling helping me move forward or keeping me stuck? Self-pity thrives on blame and negativity. It whispers, why me? And wallows in a sense of powerlessness. Self-compassion, on the other hand, acknowledges the pain but focuses on solutions. It asks, what can I learn from this experience? And empowers us to take positive action. Another clue lies in our willingness to extend compassion to others. If we're constantly criticizing ourselves, we're likely to judge others harshly as well. Self-compassion, however, fosters empathy and understanding, allowing us to connect with others from a place of love and acceptance. Section five, the path to self-compassion. Cultivating kindness within. Cultivating self-compassion is a journey, not a destination. It requires practice, patience, and a willingness to challenge our inner critic. The first step is recognizing our negative self-talk, those harsh judgments we unknowingly unleash upon ourselves. Once we are aware of these patterns, we can begin to challenge them with kindness and understanding. Imagine replacing those critical voices with the compassionate words of a loving friend. What would they say to comfort and encourage you? Another powerful tool is mindfulness, the practice of being present in the moment without judgment. By focusing on our breath, our senses and our surroundings, we can cultivate a sense of calm and clarity, allowing us to observe our thoughts and feelings with greater objectivity. Section 6 Practice Makes Progress Exercises for Nurturing Self-Compassion Just like any skill, self-compassion requires practice. Here are a few simple yet powerful exercises to nurture this quality within. 1. Write a letter to yourself. Imagine you're writing to a close friend who is going through a difficult time. Offer them the same kindness, understanding and encouragement you would give to someone you love. 2. Practice self-care. Make time for activities that bring you joy and nourishment, whether it's reading a good book, taking a warm bath, or spending time in nature. Self-care is a way of honoring your needs and replenishing your energy. 
3. Challenge negative self-talk. When you notice critical thoughts creeping in, gently challenge them with evidence to the contrary. Remind yourself of your strengths, accomplishments and the people who love and care about you. 4. Practice gratitude. Take time each day to appreciate the good things in your life, no matter how small. Gratitude helps shift our focus from what's lacking to what we already have, fostering a sense of contentment and well-being. Section 7, the ripple effect spreading compassion outward. The beauty of self-compassion is that it doesn't stop with ourselves. As we cultivate kindness and understanding within, it naturally extends outward to those around us. When we are filled with self-acceptance, we are more likely to accept others for who they are, flaws and all. We become more patient, more forgiving and more willing to lend a helping hand. Imagine a pebble dropped into a still pond, creating ripples that spread outward, touching everything in their path. That's the power of self-compassion. It has a ripple effect, transforming not only our own lives, but also the lives of those around us. By embracing self-compassion, we contribute to a more compassionate and understanding world. To section eight, embrace the journey. A call to self-compassion. Self-compassion is not a sign of weakness, but a source of incredible strength. It's the foundation for a more fulfilling, meaningful and connected life. It allows us to embrace our imperfections, learn from our mistakes and live with greater authenticity and joy. The journey may not always be easy. There will be days when self-doubt creeps in and those critical voices resurface. But with each step we take towards self-compassion, we become stronger, more resilient and more capable of creating a life we love. So I urge you to embrace the journey of self-compassion Treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding you would offer a dear friend. Celebrate your strengths, learn from your mistakes and never stop believing in your own potential.